Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Open 24 Hours. Pray you never run out of gas. Written and directed by Patrick Reynolds, starring Vanessa Grass, Brendan Fletcher, Emily Tennant, Daniel O'Meara, and Cole Vigu. This movie's about Mary. She's the ex-girlfriend of a serial killer. She's on parole, she's looking to start fresh, so she applies for a job at a 24-hour convenience store slash gas station. Unfortunately, her troubled past comes back to haunt her in the form of visions and maybe even her ex-boyfriend, the Rain Ripper. This is a recommendation from our top donator over on Patreon, Deke, open 24 Four Hours is directed by another movie that Deke has recommended in the past, which was Rites of Spring. And he also did The Devil's Dolls, which we didn't review, but it did look interesting. So thank you, Deke, for the support. We're gonna do this mostly spoiler-free because that's important, I think, for this one. So what do we like? I really liked our cast. Everyone did a great job playing their characters. Like, Mary was fantastic when she was having her psychotic episodes because, like, you really couldn't tell what was real and what was fake. And just her facial expressions really helped deliver the emotion. And despite knowing she was involved in some really bad shit in the past, you're completely on board with her because you can see that she genuinely wants to start fresh. And it's definitely not easy. Even with the amount of medication that she seems to be taking, the antipsychotics aren't working and she's still tripping out. It's supposed to rain tonight. Mary, we talked about this. You can't freak out every time it rains. I think what was nice about Brendan Fletcher's character is in nearly every movie, especially when it comes to like a backwoods gas station that looks like this gas station, these guys are creepy as shit. And this is the first time that I've ever seen a character like this actually be a nice guy. Just a genuine person trying to help Mary out and showing her the ropes because they're co-workers now. And he wasn't weird, he wasn't creepy, he wasn't like hitting on her or anything. Just a normal dude. And I do feel bad because I know we have viewers that are down in Alabama and Georgia or West Virginia in like places that are known for having really stereotypical people. I get it, and we're sorry, but this is a good representation here, and I think this is gonna help you guys out. Especially Ed. What a great gas station owner. He seemed like such a nice guy. He was concerned. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna trust my gut and give this girl a shot. In hindsight, maybe shouldn't have trusted his gut by the end of the film, but good on him for giving Mary a chance. And while we're keeping spoilers to a minimum, it is worth talking about James, our serial killer, because you get to see him through visions, and he's a great actor because he's not over the top, super dark and angsty like most movies. He's just a guy who talks normal. He's not dumb, he's not crazy. Well, he's crazy in his own sense. But like, he seems like a normal person. And it helps tie into why Mary would be caught up in that relationship. So like, the story is like, he was a murderer and she knew about it and she didn't say anything. And that's why she's so traumatized. And you can see why she might be convinced by this guy. Do you like watching people die? The actual look that he has is very creepy as a killer. It's kind of like the idea of I Know What You Did Last Summer with like the raincoat. It just adds to the atmosphere. It adds to his name. It's just creepy because you have such a hard time seeing someone under that hood that it gives him that ominous feel. Like you don't know, is it James? Is it someone else? You don't know what's real and what's not. Much like our main character. Another huge highlight for me was the cinematography. The cinematography in this movie is great. It's shot well, it has great camera moves, but the lighting is what really captivated me because if you were to isolate basically any single still from this movie, it looks good. Everything is well framed. There's lots of different colored lights or different colors in opposing corners or something because it is a convenience store. This setting really reminded me of random acts of violence. It's not quite like the same kind of movie, but it has the same stylistic feel. One of the standout scenes in this film that really utilizes this technique has to be in the bathroom when Mary goes in there to try and see what a customer was complaining about because she said that it was out of order and she goes on this huge trip. It's got everything. Great tension, great jump scares, great look. It's a very well done scene. And the fact that this is basically a one location movie, it didn't feel like it whatsoever. There are a couple like one-off shots in different locations, but you can tell it's a fairly low budget movie because they only utilize this one set and it doesn't really feel like it. And it is an hour and 50 minutes, but because there's a few different characters that 
kind of come and go. It doesn't feel like it drags. And without spoiling anything, I appreciated all the kills in this film. They were fantastic. They were impactful. It sucks that we can't really show you them, but they're very gruesome because our killer uses blunt objects, like a hammer and a sledgehammer, to take out their victim. You watched all those girls get killed? Not all of them. Now, what didn't we like? As much as I really liked the pacing of this film, I actually disliked the pacing of the final act. I was so engaged with what was going on up to that point, and then I just kind of wanted it to end. I absolutely agree. And again, I'm trying to edit as weirdly in this spot to not give anything away. But yes, the last little bit is like a kind of a cat and mouse game that it goes and it doesn't need to. It could have ended 15 minutes earlier and then the runtime would have been shorter and this wouldn't have even been a gripe. I mean, we got some cool moments out of it, but like they just could have trimmed it. It's been a while since I've said this and I say it every time I watch a movie like this. I hate when you start with the last shot of a movie. It gives it all away. It's mainly when you know it's gonna be like a cat and mouse style of film where like a girl is getting chased by a killer because that's the whole point of the film. If someone is locked in somewhere and they're trying to escape. If you show them escaped at the beginning of the film, you know they're gonna be okay. So why watch the next hour 40 minutes? Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Open 24 Hours was an enjoyable film. It's like a one location thriller pseudo slasher that's stylistic, it looks cool, the killer looks great, and we had a great like main lead because she's a good actor and she has issues with her past so you don't know as an audience member what's real or what's just in her head. There's some fun little twists, there's some good splatter and kills. There were some issues when it came to like some of the pacing and the dragging on of the just the last little bit. The rest of the movie is really good and I don't think most people would think it's slow. And like John mentioned, showing the scenes from the end at the beginning is just not something that you should be doing. I don't really get it and I never will get it and I will 100 percent complain about it. But other than that, it is a good movie and I would recommend it. So I'll give this three and a half. The opposite of that good hillbilly guy that I was praising earlier in Bobby. Yeah, like the opposite of that guy out of five. I'm not going to be dating anyone for a while. Why to waste the machinery? I had a good time watching this film. I was invested. I liked our characters and I wanted to know more. Finding out Mary's past and the truth behind what actually happened was a very interesting plot point. Plus the idea of what's real and what's fake allows you to kind of play a game while watching the movie and figuring out is what she's seeing really James or is it just her mind playing a trick on her? And then accompanying that with great cinematography and really good lighting, you have an awesome atmosphere. However, my two biggest issues is obviously the opening with the last shot and the pacing of the final act. It just kind of dragged on for me. But either way, I had a good time watching it and I would recommend it. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half model employees out of five. And you can eat and drink anything you want. Just keep your hands up. These babies are mine and I have seniority. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if you want the opportunity to recommend a movie for us to review, check out the Patreon. Links in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything Bloodbath and beyond.